Oh my goodness. So um, I'm probably going to church this weekend, but Sue's probably not. Well, we can't either. I figured you only go once a month, right? About. About. So last weekend of the month, I figured you guys weren't going this weekend. But I am. As we're streaming live on Facebook, I feel like it's good to say, as you hear these people speaking about going to church once a month, they live two hours away. <laughs> yeah we live in um uh, yeah i i noticed last weekend you said oh it's so hot here what was it like 80 degrees <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it was warm for us i and uh, ours had ours had gotten almost cold it was only 95 Oh, right. <laughs> not, not warm enough to swim. <laughs> yeah, in Bakersfield, if it's not a hundred degrees, it's too cold to go swimming. Yeah. <laughs> Can we pull this? All right. It is six o'clock, and I am grateful that you were all with me. We are going to be doing some Genesis twenty-seven, and and Steve, before you mentioned that we didn't do the last couple of verses of Genesis twenty-six. Yes, we will hit that as well. And I. Uh, I say that with great joy, by the way. I don't know how long I'll keep this background, but I'm kind of having fun with it right now. <laughs> yep. Looks cool. Oh. <laughs> let's, uh, let's open in prayer. God of the universe. Or universes or whatever it is that we try to call words that we don't really understand. We are part of something huge. And yet you love us and you know us. And your stories, our stories, well, they matter to your story in ways that we can't possibly comprehend either. And so as we go into this story from Genesis 27 and see a family doing something that we have heard since we were children, teach us to see in the ordinary, the extraordinary both in this story and in ours. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Right. I have to say, before we start, I never thought I would enjoy the Old Testament as much as I enjoy the New Testament, but in Genesis and, and then through the... Uh, uh, Elijah series, it has just been a joy. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to hear it because I I just love, love the Bible. Um, such a like I um, I'm excited to be doing this because I love the story too. It's the first story. Genesis is Genesis is like my my one A or one B favorite book of the Bible, and the and the first one is Mark. Maybe that's one A or one B. Um, which is why whenever we're done with Genesis, we're going to do Mark next, because after doing the crazy things for so long, I, I feel like it's it's OK to do my favorite things um, because they're the meat and potatoes and salad and dessert. Like it's the whole meal. Anyway, enough of me going crazy about just talking about books of the Bible. Um, let's read a chapter of the Bible and then we'll see how crazy I get. Um. We did not finish off with chapter 26. We still have to read the last two verses of chapter 26. And if anybody wants to start there at 2634 and go, wow, let's just read a big chunk, all the way through Genesis 17. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, when Esau was 40 years old, he married Judith, daughter of Biri the Hittite, and Basimath, daughter of Elon the Hittite, and they made life bitter for Isaac and Rebekah. And just keep going for the next 17 verses, brother. All right. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called his elder son Esau and said to him, My son. And he answered, Here I am. He said, see, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me. 
Then prepare me savory food such as I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game for his father, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father say to your brother Esau, bring me game and prepare for me savory food to eat that I may bless you before the Lord before I die. Now, therefore, my son, obey my word as I command you. Go to the flock and get me two choice kids so that I may prepare from them savory food for your father such as he likes. And you shall take it to your father to eat so that he may bless you before he dies. But Jacob said to his mother, Rebekah, look, my brother Esau is a hairy man and I am a man of smooth skin. Perhaps my father will feel me and I shall seem to be mocking him and bring a curse on myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son, only obey my word and go get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother and his mother prepared savory food such as his father loved. Then Rebecca took the best garments of her elder son Esau, which were with her in the house and put them on her younger son Jacob. And she put the skins of the kids on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. Then she handed the savory food and the bread that she had prepared to her son, Jacob. That was a big chunk of things before we just move on, because we're just going to read the whole story. But you know the story, right? Right. Yeah, this is just one of those stories that we all know. What are some other versions of stories that we all know? And we're not even sure why we might all know them. Creation story. Creation story. Creation story. Everyone Elijah knows. going with a in a chariot. chariot, chariot of fire with Elijah, Samson, Samson and Delilah, Moses, oh, Moses, Noah. See, like there's a Yoda. lot of stories we know in this, and this is one of them. But this is kind of one of them that we like. We know it, but we can kind of gloss right over it. We're not like yeah, we know, we all know it, but we're not sure what to do with it. But did anyone want to point out anything they see in it right now? Why? I had forgotten entirely, and I know I missed a couple. Why in the heck is Rebecca pushing uh, Jacob forward instead of Esau? Well, she did receive an oracle or an answer to a prayer when the two kids within her were going crazy. And um, and she was praying like, oh, there was this war going on within me. And she heard from God that there were like two nations in, in her and the younger or the older was going to serve the younger. So this strange oracle from God, we have no idea if she has shared, if she has remembered, if this is what's at play. Um, that That's the only kind of reason that we might have in the Bible. So also Jacob's her favorite between the two sons. I mean, that's that's what everybody assumes is going on here. Um, we know, no, I mean, we do see that Esau made life bitter for them, too. Yeah. And so there could be a favorite. Now, we imply over and over again that it's a favorite. Yeah. Certainly, Isaac has a favorite, too, right? Yeah, he likes Esau because he likes the food. <laughs> or does he just like Esau? Because part of the deal with Esau is he gets to be what should be expected, right? The firstborn should be the firstborn. And so that even, had, even yeah, if... Well, Esau, sorry. But yeah, that had tremendous power in, in, their, their, in, in, in their culture. Yeah. Even though Isaac himself was not the firstborn. No, no. He he knows that he's, a, but he is the child of promise. There's only one child of promise. But yeah, he's not the firstborn. And and this is not the first or second time. The first, not the firstborn is the one who's getting off all right here. And, and, and why does God choose Jacob, apparently? And the only one who might know is Rebecca. I don't know. Oh, see, that's that's some of the problem with the story of Genesis is we don't know. God doesn't really explain 
God's self. Just kind of does whatever. We know there's a blessing. We know there's a direction. And wouldn't we like it to be kind of immediate? Who heard this promise first? Rebecca? Well, Rebecca went about Jacob, but whatever promise, like this blessing that Isaac is about to bestow. Abraham. Oh, Abraham. Well, where's Abraham? Gone. Gone. Oh, well, and he gave it to Isaac, obviously, no? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what? Isaac's old, right? Correct. So this blessing isn't just for one generation. It's it's multiple generations. It's going forward. There's something incredibly important about passing it on. It's not about individuals. It's about lineages. And those lineages are supposed to bless the world. But the blessing keeps going down one certain line. And we don't know why. So you know how when you read things and you either think you're reading something because that's what your brain says, or so until you said it out loud, I missed it and had to go back where it said that uh, these two, uh, the Hittite daughter, made life bitter for Isaac and Rebecca instead of better, which is what I thought until you said bitter. <laughs> and uh, maybe that's why Rebecca is kind of leaning towards Jacob. Yeah, the thing about this story is we can figure out all the reasons that it might be happening, but we don't know. There's not really motivation given in the story. Have you so far? Is the narrator judging anybody? No, no. no. But how long have we interpreted as we are judging people? <laughs> Yeah. And then in the midst of all of this, is God doing whatever God is doing? And they believe in this and it's generational, but they don't understand what God's quite doing either, other than it has this concept of blessing. And blessing is important. And blessing is something that goes out loud. I'm going to have to ask my, my dog to calm down for a moment. I apologize. <laughs> Maybe he's up on the space station. <laughs> it's like he escaped into space. <laughs> it's fun to see it go on that way. I'm enjoying the background too, Bill. Thank you, by the way. I think I wanted this kind of idea right now. You're welcome. Anyway. Okay, so we can see that. We already know the rest of the story, so we should just read it, right? Anyone want to read it? Let's do uh, 18 through 20. Where was I going to go with that one? I need to turn. I will read. Or... Um, 18 through 29, please. Okay. Do you, somebody else want to read? I'll read. Read. He went to his father and said, my father. Yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may have, you may give me your blessing. And Isaac asked his son, how did you find it so quickly, my son? <laughs> the Lord, your God, gave this, me success, he replied. And then Isaac said to Jacob, come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you were really you really are my son, Esau. <laughs> Jacob went close to his father, Isaac, who touched him and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not rec recognize him for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son, Esau? He asked. He, I am, he replied. And then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. So Jacob brought it to him and he ate. And, and he brought some wine and he drank. And then his father Isaac said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went and kissed him. 
when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. How far do I go? All the way through the end of the blessing. Okay. May God give you heaven's dew and earth's riches and abundance of grain and new wine. May na nations serve you and peoples, peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. Okay, I guess I got You got there. And I was like, all right, good. Well, there we go. What do we notice about that story quickly? Makes it sound like there's other children, other sons. Is it just the way it's... Um, other sons did not mean just like Esau. It also meant whatever kind of progeny descendants come from Esau as well because oh, okay. this is generational okay. so yeah the thing that immediately came to my mind is God gave this blessing to begin with and certainly God can tell the difference yeah so, hmm. but uh, what all is going on here as well? Like, we know the story, so we're not surprised. We probably, I remember in Sunday school putting on like that, God knows how gross it was, really. But like <laughs> that cheap game kind of stuff, being like, these are hairy hands. And I was like, my God, he was hairy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and that need of things. But I didn't like remember being told until I keep looking at the story over and over again that Isaac wasn't just duped by sudden hairy hands. He seemed to over and over again be trying to discern whether or not this was actually Esau. Right. right. Yeah. Sounded like Jacob. <laughs> and then, he, well, come here and let me feel you. Okay, that feels like it. Now, how much does Jacob speak after Isaac is asking to feel his hands and says something like, sounds like Jacob? He says, I am. Yeah, he only replies with an I am. He becomes very terse. Did Jacob immediately want to do this? No, I don't no. think so. He's afraid of the whole thing. And why is he doing it? His mom asked him to. His mom do we don't into really it. know why she's doing it. Is he just a favorite? Is it the oracle? Is it is she? What is her motivation? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, she is related to Laban. She is related to Laban and Jacob, who is uh, going to you know be special later here as well. Although we've seen Jacob a couple of times, have we been particularly impressed with Jacob as a person yet? Oh. No. no. <laughs> Oh, how about Esau? Are we impressed with Esau? No. 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 Now, maybe after my waxing of poetic of Isaac last week, we can be like, yeah, we actually kind of like Isaac. And I can't ask that question because if you're like, no, I still hate Isaac, I'm going to be like, it's going to break my heart. So, <laughs> um, like, but Esau and Jacob were kind of like, ah. And Rebecca's doing things here. Now, what would we say of Rebecca's way of doing it? Does anyone think there's anything good about what she's doing? Very underhanded. Yeah. yeah. Who, who did Jake or Isaac want to give this blessing to? Very obviously. Esau. Esau. Okay. Now, we already are privy to know that Esau is not the one God is choosing. And while we never see God in action here, isn't this exactly what God wanted? Is it? He prophesied it, but is the prophecy just the way he wants, or is it pro prophecy uh, him just telling him what's going to happen? It's, the way of the story is the way of the blessing is exactly kind of through this odd way. 
and it's a strange story at least in the way maybe you're right maybe they're they're completely thwarting the whole thing and the bible's not telling the truth about the oracle in the first place but we're taking the narrative for what it is and maybe that's why the narrator is not judging a soul here either But we kind of want to. But simultaneously, let's say that the oracle is, is just real. And this is part of why she's doing it. And she is certainly seeming to do it in an underhanded way, right? Mm -hmm. Well, How much power does a woman have then? None. <laughs> so why do we judge her for using the only power she has, where she is willing to take a curse upon herself? Or should we stop for a second and ponder the idea of blessings and curses at this time? <laughs> Do any of us truly understand the power of the idea of a blessing? I don't think so. No, we just throw words around. And when we were young, we were taught to say, when words hurt, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. You know, I, I had this confused blessings with a kind of, you know, the oldest one is the inheritor of everything. And yet the, the blessing that uh, Isaac gives is uh, basically the same blessing that Abraham got from God. Absolutely. That's an add on, not, not an inheritance. Um, but he already has the birthright. So now, now he gets the inheritance and he gets the blessing. But maybe Isaac doesn't know that. We should finish this story to see what they do know. Um, anyone want to read verse 30 all the way through 40? Um, I will. Thank you. After Isaac finished blessing him and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. And he said to him, my father, sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. And his father Isaac asked him, who are you? I'm your son, he answered, your firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came, and I blessed him, and indeed he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out in a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? He has deceived me these two times. He took my birthright and now he takes my blessing. And then he asked, haven't you reserved any blessing for me? And Isaac answered Esau, I have made him Lord over you and have made all of his relatives his servants. And I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. And Esau wept aloud. And his father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke off from your neck. All right. How was that? Really hard to understand in today's world. So you only have one blessing? Well, there was two blessings there. He got a blessing, too. Sort of. I come across quite like a blessing, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's a rough blessing, right? Right. Yeah. They couldn't share the blessing? And that's the weird thing about this language that we don't understand. When we're dealing with this, we're entering a world that's a lot different. I don't know why that happened. Okay, there we go. Like... 
sometimes the ancient world is really foreign and that can make sense, right? And in the ancient Near Eastern world, uh, a blessing was a whole lot more than a wish for someone's well-being. It, it, believed, it was believed to have carried absolutely real power, shaping the destiny and the purpose and the life and the future of not just the person who received it, but the person who would receive it after them. And blessing was often seen as a conduit of divine favor. And we have already mentioned that the blessing that Isaac gives to Jacob is the blessing that Abraham received from God. And the blessing gives status that's both spiritual and, and, and material. And it affects every aspect of the person's life who receives it. And imagine being Isaac's favorite, the firstborn. Now you've already, you sold your birthright. Now he said it there. Is it the first time that Isaac's hearing of it? Maybe, who knows? We don't know. And if it is the first time he's hearing of it, maybe that's part of that. Like, but you can't take back a blessing. And in the first blessing, what did he say about who was going to serve whom? Be Lord over your brothers. So how could he possibly give a blessing that takes away or makes the blessing that he's given that was the blessing? somehow less but is there any hope in Esau's blessing at all yes a bit and what's that he says you may break loose uh -huh. you shall break his yoke from your neck if you do break loose <laughs> so there's a kind of conditional <laughs> But there is a potential for liberation. Yeah. It's, it's not a good blessing. But the blessing comes. But when you break loose, you shall break your yoke from his neck. And what's going to possibly break him loose? I don't know. We're Christians. What might we say? Forgiveness. Perhaps forgiveness. Amen. Forgiveness helps a lot of things, does it not? But also, this is generational. And we're not, it's hard for us to understand the nature of generational blessing. What does God say with regards to, like, blessings in the, uh, in some other parts of the Torah? Like... I, to those whom I bless, the blessings go to what? To the 10th generation? As the curses, the blessings go further. The thousandth generation. Hmm. But at this moment, it's being gently passed down a lineage in ways that we don't expect. Does the Bible itself tell you that you have to like give your uh, what it, whatever blessings you get, who gets the most of the of the blessings and in the birthright and everything else like that? Is it the second born like this story or does no, it's the first born. Leviticus and Deuteronomy are clear. The firstborn gets to receive things. Then why are these stories of God usurping God's very laws to do whatever God wants existing as the way with which this promise and blessing go about everything? And, and simultaneously, there is a hope somewhere that there's liberation even for Esau. Did Ishmael get the blessing of Abraham? 
No. No. Did he get a blessing? Yes. And was it the same kind of blessing? No. No. No, no. It was it he was given the arts and and a whole bunch of land and and it was just these different ways of things, but it's not the blessing that is this promise of people bowing down before you and serving you and yet a promise of liberation for those who are struggling under servitude. But again, for the sake of things and the beauty of why we kept hearing this story, you want to know why we know this story so much? Because this one's just a little strange, right? Like it's kind of out of left field. It's like an episode of television. It's not a movie like Samson and Delilah. It's like part of a thing like, oh, this is toward the end of Isaac. But no, their sons are still fighting, but that's not over. Now there's Isaac and there's, it's just a, chapter and it's like and why do we know this story so much like creation dun 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 noah's ark dun 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 moses and the exodus dun 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 like these are big things this story even elijah up on the chariot of fires was wah, you know like this isn't this is this is like something i see sitcoms about except not as funny <laughs> or maybe it is funny I, I remember it because of the hairy hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The hairy hand was famous in all the Sunday school things. Why is the story famous outside of the hairy hand? <laughs> I don't know because yeah, when, I learned this, and when I learned this story, it never dawned on me that this was, I mean, I realized that that I, what I didn't understand even as a child is why why somebody who tricked somebody who was dying right was rewarded. Even I could at six could understand that that seemed wrong. But. Yeah, I mean, you can tell God whatever you want to tell God about what is the world fair? No. 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 Does it make much sense how some people just get to have things easy and some people get to have things hard? Not at no. all. Does it make any sense why some people just like, like get everything handed to them in a horrible and some people will give you the shirt off their back and they just seem to struggle through life? No, the world doesn't make sense. And part of the thing with this story is the Bible doesn't try to pretend to us that it does. Maybe the point, maybe the point is that like Isaac was technically the second born, but chosen by God. Jacob is the one that is chosen by God and God is doing what God wants to do. God is doing what God wants to do. I have one quick question. Did yeah. other cultures also have blessings? I'm assuming they did, but oh, this is a very, sure. very common practice in the ancient. Okay, age. I'm sorry. That's to... what I would assume. Yeah. Was there more to say? I just that was an ADHD no. response. I know the answer. I know the answer. <laughs> I assume so, but I just I hadn't heard that much about it. I think it just was in background noise that I heard that it was true. Okay, and and, and it's still very true in many places in the world. Mm -hmm that blessings are important. Yeah, if you go to India and you have these people who are following these ideas, they're, they're, they're saints of some kind. What do they all want from the saint? Blessing. Blessing. Um, when I, uh, like, uh, I have one of the rosaries that I wear that was blessed by the Pope. Yeah. And I remember when I was in Maui a couple of years ago and I was wearing that one and we were buying something at a shop in Lahaina, which I'm sure is not there anymore. Um, that's terrible. The, the woman who was selling it to me looks at my rosary and says, that rosary is so beautiful. And I was like, oh, thank you. It's blessed by the Pope. And she was just like, oh, like and she was like, may I kiss it? So what did I do? Let her kiss it. 
I ran away. No, I'm kidding. I absolutely <laughs> <laughs> I took it off and I and I let her kiss it. And she <laughs> kissed it and she treasured it for a second and asked me questions about it because mm -hmm. it contained on it a blessing from the Pope. Yep. <laughs> we understand the importance of what these things have meant to our ancestors because they didn't live in a world where everybody thought they were going to get everything. And the opposite of a blessing isn't a curse. The blessing is the promise for a future, a promise for a life, a promise that you're going to exist with some kind of abundance of things. This wasn't just words, this was forever. And you're the next of the lineage. And a curse is forever as well. Notice that when Jacob said, and what if I receive a curse? What does Rebecca say to him? Put it on herself. Yeah. Give it to me, my son. Because he has to live with the blessing or the curse for ever and what comes after him lives with that blessing or that curse too because none of this is just upon an individual our 21st century american individualism cannot possibly comprehend the power of blessings and curses to people 4000 years ago no we just can't we can't understand the importance of this story because this story doesn't make sense to us at all. We've entered another world. And the narrator is purposely ambiguous with regards to the morality of the characters that are being represented here. Because there's a truth about this blessing as well. It's going to do what it's going to do in the midst of things that don't seem like the best way for it to happen. And so it cautions us against a morality of the ways that God can work in the midst of things. Notice we are the ones judging them, not the narrator. And God never shows up except to be referenced, except that God might be in everything. All right. Anyone want to read 41 through 45? I can do that. Thank you. Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. But the words of her elder son Esau were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called her younger son Jacob and said to him, your brother Esau is consoling himself by planning to kill you. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Flee at once to my brother Laban and Haran and stay with him a while until your brother's fury turns away, until your brother's anger against you turns away and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I'm weary of my life because of the Hittite women. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women such as these, one of the women of the land, what good will my life be to me? All right. We'll stop there for the moment. What about that part? Esau seems a bit upset. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. I was... Uh... The understated bare quality of that statement was brilliant. Yeah. 
Um, it, it looks like Esau is aware that his that Rebecca organized this. Why should I lose both of you in the same day? That's an interesting question, right? Because yeah. is he aware? Maybe he, yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. If he says it to himself, how does his mother hear about it? She's a snoop. He's sneaky. <laughs> yeah. mothers, mothers have a tendency to know what's going on at all times. It's it's totally a loss to me how it happens. <laughs> extra ears, <laughs> extra eyes. And, yeah. and, and, and maybe, who knows? But... <laughs> Isaac's old, we know this. Now, how often have we heard people judge Isaac for being the fool who uh, falls for this 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 dupe? I, I, well, I'm not sure I heard that. Oh, good. Then I won't have to worry about it. If no one's saying, yeah, I've heard that, then we'll not talk about it. He's an old man. He He's did blind. seem to not be sure. He's blind. Who knows how good his hearing actually is? And like, he is getting closer to death and wants to give his blessing to his son. Now, in the midst of getting a blessing, is this more than just the words even? And I'm, by me asking the question, the answer is obviously, yeah. Um, but like, can we see why? What did Isaac ask Esau to do? Bring him food. Bring him food. Was he going to obviously, before either of these blessings, give the blessing before the meal was eaten? No. Mm -hmm. See, we don't even see the ritual that's taking place. which is interesting. And maybe that means we should celebrate communion every week. Some churches do. I know. Now, some, every time you have a service, it doesn't matter when it is, you will have communion. Don't tell Tony that. <laughs> <laughs> I already know that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they do that? Just to try to bore you with it? Or is there something about meals? Do you remember the resurrection stories? How many times does Jesus eat with people risen from the dead? Many. How many times do they realize who he is around a table? Yeah. Or next to some food? How important are meals in the blessing? Why is the central symbol, well, while the central symbol of our faith is a cross because everybody's, but the central symbol really of our worship Meal. is the table. Abraham offered God uh, hospitality when he was on his way to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Could that be connected? Absolutely. Because in doing that, one recognized the sacredness of another, the breaking of bread. And even if Abraham wasn't sure that he was doing that, to break bread with someone, to offer that with somebody else, to, to invite them into your hospitality, is always ritualistic. What is something that everybody needs to do? Eat. Eat. But, you know, that makes such sense to me because every family celebration that we have, every, every time we get together with friends, it seems like it's eventually all comes down to sitting at a table together. I yeah, mean, it's, it's still central to how we honor one another has anyone gone to a thanksgiving without a thanksgiving <laughs> what would that be yeah no you that was brilliant very well said like 
when we want to get to know people well, even though I think younger, and this is the thing, younger generations are doing it even less. I mean, how often now will I eat a meal while looking at my phone or doing something else as opposed to trying to, I, or standing up? I can't, actually, that's sad. When I come to think about it, I can't, it's amazing how much I eat standing up. Like just like mm, a couple things while trying to do other stuff. Like I'm, I'm adding it into my biological necessity, but I'm not paying any attention to it. Why might it be even more important that, did you notice that Isaac asked him to make his favorite savory dish? Mm-hmm. Well, this isn't just like, hey, make me some slop. <laughs> this might be his last meal. Well, amen. And he wants to eat his favorite dish. This is a sacred, solemn moment. We don't even understand the, the reality of blessing in this story, let alone the sacredness of the ritual leading up to it. The hunt? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that it's a little crazy to, to like, talk about things in this way because you know there's some issues with but anyway we've all seen dances with wolves right 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 <laughs> is there a sacredness to hunting that is lost on those of us who hunt by going to a grocery store yes <laughs> no doubt doubt we are in a foreign world, but we are in a foreign world that understands more about connection to the earth, connection to the generations, and connection to God than our sorry little world does at all. And while we read this story, we're more interested in the motivations of the characters. Because that's how we think. And it's brilliant. The narrator showing us these complex, we don't know why. No one seems particularly good in here, except maybe Isaac. <laughs> I actually do think Isaac seems pretty good in here. After he finds out that he's duped, and he's like, well, who was it? What does he immediately say? It was Jacob. Did he know? He kind of knew mm -hmm. the whole time, like you. Yeah. And then he first he shakes violently, then he says it. Then does he seem after his violent shake to like be continually bothered by this? He's he definitely less like, bothered than Esau. He, he kind of like he said, what did you expect? His name is Jacob. No, I think that was Esau who said it too. What do you expect? His name was Jacob. Mm -hmm. Oh, Esau was. said it. Okay. But I mean, like, again, what do you expect? His name was Jacob. Like, he's basically blaming whoever named him, which was probably his father. <laughs> <laughs> and why, why did he say that? What does Jacob mean? Heel grabber. And so a oh, heel yeah, grabber yeah. is a deceiver. Oh, okay. Right. I remember now. Yeah. So, so he's like, he's playing with his own ridiculous name, much like the hairy hands. Esau, he's hairy. Like, that's all that's going on there. Um, sort of like, well, he might have stayed in the womb forever if he hadn't grabbed a hold of my heel. Yeah. <laughs> and he's despairing. He's lost everything. His birthright, his whatever. And if he doesn't get any kind of blessing, what does he have in this world? Nothing. Nothing but what his brother is willing to give him. Mm -hmm. And that, that's not a future. But have we seen this blessing give people much of a present? Some. But they keep passing it on they keep believing in it because it's not about them it's about the generations but it's not even about the generations it's about what god is doing and we mustn't forget christians through which blessing does jesus arrive
whatever strange thing God is up to in these stories of Genesis that make us cringe sometimes. You remember Lot with his daughters? Yes. Yeah, that's one of those stories that, like, if you forgot you weren't there, like, when your own daughters get you drunk and take advantage of you one night after another and each have some kids, one twins. But one of those twins is in the lineage of Christ. And if the blessing isn't just about the moment, but generations and time, and these words somehow matter, not in a magical way. It's not like I, I give you my magic. It's how does God create in this story that we started? Back in Genesis 1. Are you talking about chaos? <laughs> yeah, but how does God create out of the chaos? As he wishes. Amen. But how? How does it work in the story? He speaks. He speaks the word. Speaks. And God said, let there be light. This whole book starts with the power of words. We did James. Does anyone remember us doing James at all? There's no reason you should. Oh, well, thank you, Kathy. That was the first one. Yeah, yeah. Was the first one, and that feels very long ago now. Uh, but what does James have to say about words? Does anyone recollect? Well, the tongue can get you into a lot of trouble. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and uh, and a lot of good. And you have to watch it. And, and who are the ones who have to pay most attention to the ways they go about things? Teachers. The, the idea in the letter or the sermon of James has so much to do with how we speak. Does Jesus talk about how we talk? Yeah. And what are some serious ways that Jesus takes language? If we remember the Sermon on the Mount, what does Jesus say about taking vows? Your yes should be yes and no, no. You don't have to swear on the heaven or the temple or anything like that. You shouldn't have to. Well, you can't change one hair white or whatever he says as well. Like... And so, yeah, it's so important that you just live from yourself. Don't use things like vows at all. Because how many of us have made vows and that didn't work out very well? <laughs> words matter here, but it's not just that words matter, it's that blessings matter. And while I can keep beating this up because it's just beating us up we don't get to fully understand it maybe that's why i got to choose this big earth thing today and be in front of it i forgot that it was there for a second until i looked at my own screen i'm like ridiculous but i kind of love it is that we've kind of gone to a place where we can see this picture and I can talk in my own prayer to open this up about the God of the universe or universe is. But we forget too, that it's not just the individual. It's not the big or just the one. It's all connected together in ways that we don't understand. And God is going to do what God is going to do in the midst of it. Even as we see a bunch of people who are morally ambiguous, while simultaneously we can see something in them all that is like, well, is that so bad? Is mm -hmm. Rebecca just doing this because she knows the Oracle and she's trying to help the whole thing go along? And we know the Oracle too, and it's not come about because of things. 
not in certainly ways that make us feel like the moral good was done. Jacob is a scoundrel a little bit, absolutely. He's concerned. You notice that when his mom's like, no, nah, just obey me, one, and two, if I get a curse, give it to me. And he's like, all right, as long as I don't have to have it. <laughs> like, this is the only one I'm like, but even Jacob. He is, I mean, what do you expect? They named him Heel Grabber. Like, <laughs> you know, his, his house. And, but, yeah. and, and then notice the blessings, because we forget these things. It's like nice one. Mm -hmm. Like, may God give you the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Are these like heavenly blessings? No. Earthly, no. earthly blessings. Like critical blessings and abundant blessings but very material and earthly blessings so be careful christians when you just want to bless people spiritually that's never how blessings have worked let people serve you and nations bow down to you be lord over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Yeah, it is the maybe uh, there'll be some meekness here, but the blessing doesn't seem particularly meek, right? No. And yet, this is a generational thing, and and in the midst of this, still too, there is a servitude that is given, but it does include the brother in kind of the thing. Not to receive a blessing certainly is not a future. So if there was no future to be had. Well, again, who received the blessing from Abraham? Isaac. Isaac. Yeah, who gave some kind of blessing to Ishmael? Was it Abraham or God? God. God. Isaac gives his other son a blessing. as if he did learn something from his father. And is it a great blessing? No. But notice in that really not so great blessing, yeah, you won't be by the fatness of the earth. Yeah, it's not where your home shall be. You'll be away from the dew of heaven. You'll live by the sword. Notice that's nobody's dream. And you shall serve your brother. It's the reality of a blessing being spoken. But there's a blessing. Because it ends with a liberation. And now again, Christian... What do we say? Now your dog is barking because of mine, or that this is not even mine. I think there's a whole chaos over there. Hmm. Of whom do we claim every knee shall bow and tongue confess? Christ. Jesus. Yeah. And so a blessing yeah. that passes down generations that God is weaving through a cure way that contains both earthly generational blessing and this other concept of a blessing that is it going to be met in Jacob's time is he going to have a bunch of people bowing down to him oh no. no so this isn't like oh you know like you're going to get out of it does Jacob have a particularly easy life no, no. no. his brother wants to kill him is he going to have to run away yep yeah, and then we we know enough of Laban already. Is he going to have a fun time with his future father-in-law? No. <laughs> it's not like he received a blessing and it's hunky-dory. Like, <laughs> does he still get to sleep in the bed that he makes? Yeah. <laughs> this is weird. But doesn't it feel kind of real? 
you know, even if we are just aware that it's a story, aren't you glad that the heroes of the faith aren't all like Jesus? Isn't it nice to see people who are a lot like us bumble and stumble and get old and blind and can't hear and have children that are fighting and like spouses that don't communicate particularly well and trying to do whatever and trying to figure out how to work with what they're doing while all just trying to do what, what is the best they can. I don't believe that even. It doesn't feel like they're just doing the best they can. But in it, God's doing something. And there will be one of whom we say that every knee shall bow and tongue confess, where when we look at this blessing of let people serve you and nations bow down to you, is a whole heck of a lot different when we remember that we still call Jesus Lord. And if we go back to Esau's blessing, and you shall serve your brother, but when you break loose, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Wait, isn't that kind of like looking for a savior? Now, I know I'm a Christian reading this story. But did I just see Jesus come about in both blessings to be a blessing to both these brothers? A blessing that their father gave them, but one was from God. And one was from a dad who didn't want to leave his son without hope for a future. And if Isaac can do that, never, ever should any church think that our blessings somehow ignore others being blessed who aren't us. Because we just read a story, we don't even know why it's famous, and maybe it's just because through this strange little story, God does the impossible, makes blessings for everyone. Huh? Genesis 27, y'all. Any book? What's, what's the deal with the Hittite women? It's mentioned be, before, <laughs> now it's mentioned at the end. <laughs> they must be really, they ruined uh, their mother. Maybe that's why she doesn't like Esau, because he married this Hittite woman. Well, yeah, no, she does not like the Hittite women, does she? She is opposed to that. What did Abraham think about the Hittite women? Did he want uh, Isaac marrying a Hittite woman? No, 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 no. So it's a, it's a, it's a thing. And um, so like, if Rebecca has been like also brought over from Abraham's like land and uh, and comes over and is not the Hittite woman, yeah. Do you get a sense that Esau asked their permission to marry these girls? To notice, there's two. Like he's already marrying a couple. Uh, we'll find out later that he actually marries another woman who's uh, from the land, I think probably just to appease his parents, but <laughs> Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, like So are Hittites and Canaanites in the same category? Um, they... Yeah, like uh, in that kind of way. Uh, they're They're from that area of the world. They're the inhabitants that were more local, um, and uh, and and worshipped uh, Baal yeah. or uh, huh? Yeah, like worshipped. We'll just say differently. Yeah, di yeah differently. Yeah. <laughs> now they lived at peace with them at that time, but they didn't really want to, you know, do that. And and there is a a sense of purity that's a part of all of this as well, um, for the moment, but. Uh, who knows why all that's in the story other than, again, we don't get to understand this one, except whatever God is doing, God is doing. 
and words matter and blessings are important and curses are important and our future is important and generations are important and God can use every which little thing that doesn't make any sense in stories that feel much like a sitcom episode. And so do you ever think that anything you're doing in life can't be used by God to change the world in ways that you will never see? <laughs> What's it like to be so awesome? <laughs> Any other questions, comments, or whatever else? I noticed through, every time I bend down to put down that can of soda, I disappear. That's, That's the way of the backgrounds, yes. So you can magically go. reappear. <laughs> and you're, when you wave your arm, it sort of dis. It, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I can't. So let's give you a back. Is there any significance to the fact that the game hunter prepared the meal himself and the uh, one who got the domestic animals had his mother prepare? So well, she told him that he, she was going to prepare it. Um, they know they're doing a deception and they're going to have to work together to get it done. Um like they this isn't honest and yeah how do you feel about that the blessing gets conferred by dishonesty even if god's behind it maybe seems odd to us well it is odd i think it's odd to everybody <laughs> and so again be careful thinking that you understand how god works because we're yeah. only past the first 27 chapters of the bible has god seemed strange to you just now <laughs> no no don't turn our religion simply into moral platitudes this is the oddity of the divine and it is a dangerous thing to be placed in the hands of a living god and it's the most glorious thing But it's never going to make all the sense that you wanted to make. We're not going to understand it on this side of the path. No. Why ask why? Why ask what if? We're just kind of living in an eternal now where we have to do our best. And sometimes we're not doing our best. Have you always done your best? No. Have you done your whole best just today? Have you made it through the whole day being your best the whole day? Yes. You know, you what? one of the things that, that it, it dawns on me. Now I almost lost it again. Oh, I love being old. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter whether we... I mean, even when we're seemingly being blessed in this world, may, maybe even then God ha is working differently than what we think. You know, yeah. we can, we've come from this great Puritan tradition that believes that, you know, if, God, if we're receiving blessings, which would make up you know 75 percent of the united states then we are chosen by god I mean, and that is and i and you know perhaps we shouldn't be so sure that that's the case there Maybe is we shouldn't in all of these stories anytime that we feel like we can be sure about something god keeps throwing curveballs right and yeah, there's an important lesson to be learned. If in the first book of the Bible, we're already like, yeah. And notice how many ways we've tried to understand these stories that make God out to be some kind of tyrant because we don't understand God and judge everybody else in the stories, even though it's just God working through the stories that feel a whole lot like the rest of the life that we all live. Right. Have your children ever fought? Those of you who have children, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> have you ever broken your heart? Have you ever been blessed but still have issues with family? 
have have you ever heard of any families that have inheritance problems? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> and but we, you know, with all their failings, they end up, all end up in um, in Hebrews. But look at the faith of Abraham. Look at the faith of Jacob. Look at the faith of Isaac. So even even in their flawed things, uh, and we end up in that book too. I mean, we end up in that chapter too, because. because yeah, so God can only work with people. Even if we go through, like, are these blessings that they had, like, uh, did they get some stuff? Yeah. Did some things work out well? Yeah. Did it all work out well? No, 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 no. Did they all believe that something was being passed through them that was important? Did they believe that God was doing something with them despite them? Did they live with a trust in God? God, if not as what we might call saints, yeah. What's Patrick, it gives me hope that God is working through me into the next generations. It gives me hope. Uh, God is. God's working through each one of. And we have no idea exactly what, but you are inheritors of a blessing. A blessing that will not be something just for our lives, but for all of life, for all of time, as God continues to weave together the tapestry of creation. Do you really think you're so powerful that God can't use you? Hmm. If these stories teach us anything, we can be bumbling idiots. And God's going to use us to do exactly what God needs. Now, that doesn't mean we should be bumbling idiots. <laughs> but we can be. And when you see the faith of oppressed people who have had to fight for everything or are terribly oppressed and they can't even fight for anything, and you see the strength and the beauty in what they believe, then you know that God can pull these people up and they can be leaders. And everybody in the midst of these things, like there's no such thing as a world in the twin blessings that Isaac gives his sons. That if I, I mean, granted, I did some interpretive dancing to get to the place of Jesus fulfilling both of them. But we were all like, oh, yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it seems right as we understand Jesus. And we, right. and we get to live in this world where these are not all made manifest yet, but we get to know that this is how God is doing. And we need to remember that whatever we do now ripples throughout time, not just as a metaphor <laughs> that is supposed to motivate us, but as a reality of which we are a part. Anyway. Good job, y'all. I love the Bible. I love these stories. They speak so much life. And God never quite makes sense. And I love it. Because you know what so many religions try to do? Make God make sense. And in, in, in this in, in our scriptures. So be careful judging God, because again, how many times we've been surprised doing these first 27 chapters? Remember when God wasn't the one cursing them? They were just cursed because they got to sleep in the bed they made. Anyway, enough. I need to stop because I can have too much fun, and then I'll just go into it some more. So God, thank you for all of these people, for our time together, for stories that make us feel in our ways of maybe being normal and boring and bumbling and trying and 
Well, that make us feel holy, even in the normalcy of our existence. Now, may we embrace the fullness of the blessings you've bestowed upon us and bless others with it. So those blessings move past us into your eternal. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Garrett. Thank you. Thanks.